Come September, Lincoln Financial Field will be host to the Philadelphia Eagles. But this weekend, lacrosse takes over. Maryland makes its third semifinal appearance in the past four years. UMass makes its first ever national semifinal appearance as the only unseeded team left in the tournament. The semis are next. In game one of our national semifinal doubleheader, UMass takes on Maryland. Last year, the Minutemen burst onto the national scene, ending Syracuse's streak of 22 straight years in the semifinals. In 2006, UMass now finds themselves in a round of four after advancing in dramatic fashion. A win over Hofstra last week. Garber feet in front. Conley scores! Jam Conley has won it for UMass! They're going to the national semifinals for the first time in school history! The Maryland Terrapins make a third trip to the semis in the last four seasons. The Terps look primed for a trip to the title game last year, only to be sent packing by a Duke team that led the nation in scoring. Now in 2006, Merrill looks ready to soar to the next level, behind the offense of All-American Joe Walters. Game two later today, pits Syracuse against Virginia. For the Orange, a first-round exit for the postseason last year left everyone scratching their heads. But after taking out the Fennec champion Johns Hopkins a week ago, the Orange finds themselves back in familiar territory in search for yet another national title. Virginia was just 12 seconds away from a trip to the title game last year. Only to come up short in overtime against Johns Hopkins in one of the greatest games in lacrosse history. All year long, UVA has been determined to get back to Philly. The Cavs have been perfect in 06, entering the weekend 15-0 and boasting the nation's top scoring offense. Four teams, one goal. The national semis from Philly start now. For the second straight year, Lincoln Financial Field is the host of the NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Championship Holy weekend. Man. We start our semi-final doubleheader with the University of Massachusetts against Maryland of the ACC. It's presented by Warrior Lacrosse. UMass got here by first upsetting Cornell on the road, then Hofstra last week, ending the Pride 17-game win streak. The second seeded Terps KO Denver in the opening round and Princeton last weekend in the quarters. Hello, lacrosse fans. Welcome to Philly Championship Weekend. Finally here. Glad to get you us today. Dave Ryan, Quint Kestick, alongside thoughts from Rob Similcare, field level in a moment. Quint, what a setting. Maybe a record crowd today, too. Yeah, expecting 50,000 fans. This is the ultimate stage. We'll play a doubleheader today, and on Monday, we leave with a national champion. Well, UMass has Sean Morris, their great attackman, one of the best offensive players we'll see here in the entire weekend. Yeah, he's a Tawaraton finalist, which is lacrosse version of the Heisman Trophy. Third in the nation in total points. Stop and go quickness is really his signature. Look at him turn the corner, create separation, and score against Syracuse last year, ending the Orange's 22 consecutive trips to championship weekend. He's been on fire this year. 30 goals, 36 assists, and he is clearly the quarterback for the Minutemen. As important as Sean Morris is to UMass, Joe Walters drives the Maryland bus. He's the all-time leading scorer in Terps history. He is the most feared left-handed shooter in the nation. Talk about a guy who can bring it from a bunch of different areas on the field. Joe Walters, 153 goals for his career. It's all about velocity. It's all about location. And then he, he varies his shots. He's got a sidearm shot, an overhand shot. He can also uh, use bounce shots and skim shots. And when he gets off to a good start in a game, look out. He is a streaky shooter. Two and two, four points for Walters against Princeton in the quarters last week. The tailgaters are ready. The enthusiastic fans are ready. We're nearly set. National semifinals, UMass Maryland next. Be brilliant and maximize the potential value of all the cash in your account. Be in command and make sure you get the most value of every dollar you borrow. Be powerful and do it all with complete ease. In other words, be master of your domain. Oh, there's my earring. The intelligent lending optimizer and intelligent cash optimizer. Only at E-Trade. Millions of NCAA student-athletes have gone pro in something other than sports. The Road 
to the College World Series begins on ESPNU. They have won the College World Series. Catch exclusive live coverage of every regional game on the way to Omaha. It all starts Friday at noon and continues through Sunday only on ESPNU. Get your party started now. Ultra Weekend. 24 of the hottest dance anthems and club hits from today's biggest artists. Kelly Clarkson, Walk Away. Madonna, Sorry. Natasha Bedingfield, These Words, I Love You, I Love You. Ultra Weekend, an unbeatable two-CD collection of chart-topping hits and hot dance remixes featuring The Killer, Somebody's Hold Me, and many more. Cascada, Every Time We Touch. Coldplay, Talk. All the hot music you need to make yours an unbelievable Ultra Weekend. Get Ultra Weekend. Start your party now. Moments away from the start of the first of two national semifinal games. UMass and Maryland, as promised, third member of our crew, field levels, Rob Similcare, who will tell us about the experience factor. Rob, UMass has never been here. That's right, Dave, and they're facing a Maryland team that's been here three of the last four years. UMass head coach Greg Canella is very concerned about that issue. He said he'll be looking early in this game to see which of his players react, thrive in this environment and which ones get tight one thing i can tell you during their walkthrough yesterday they were chanting out the captains the, everyone just yelling at each other this is just a field it's just grass it's just got two goals like any other so we'll see if they can put the blinders on and focus on the game at hand well, without question a big issue for umass let's check out the lineups here quint jim conley the freshman attack with the game winner last week against hofstra he had five goals in that game but the story here maryland's defense ray mcgill joe sanoski steve wittenberg they're fast they're physical and they are downright nasty the midfielders brian jacobina from umass he's the jack of all trades you'll hear his name an awful lot brendan healy xander ritz and gold mcglone all seniors from maryland they are premier goal scorers as well Maryland's attack led by Walters. Massachusetts, they've got Jack Reed, probably the most feared one-on-one -on -one defender in the nation. He is an animal. Goalies today on the left, Maryland, home unis as the two seed. Harry Alford was in the national semis last year, lost to Duke in a semifinal game. Doc Schneider, just a freshman. Jonathan David Schneider, his official name, known to all as Doc. And this game today available on ESPN2 HD. Our officials for our broadcast throughout the weekend will be Mike for sound. Tom Abbott, Matt Palin, George Waters. Hands off the plastic straight up and down. Down. Jake Dean. David Tamarino face off for UMass and Maryland, and we are underway. The 2006 National Semifinals from here in Philly. And Jake. On stick, number 17 in the dark jersey, helps get the first possession of the game for Massachusetts. And Jack Reed, their star defenseman, helps carry into the box off uh, for Brian Jacobina. And we get things going from Philly. Face-offs are going to be critical. Here's some keys. Shoot 30% or better for UMass in their wins. They're usually around 32%. Shut down Maryland seniors. That's the foursome. Joe Walters, Billy McGlone, Brendan Healy, and Xander Ritz. UMass first unseated team to make the semifinals since 1996. Virginia, Syracuse, and Maryland have combined for 44 semifinal appearances and 12 titles. Garber's shot. Brett Garber, he is the grandson of uh, legendary Dick Garber, who put UMass lacrosse on the map. Garber's Gorillas, as they were known for years. A legend in Amherst. His father, Ted, also coached and is here today. Here's Sean Morris, star offensive player we told you about. 25 in the dark jersey. Bounce shot, offered a piece of it. Conley has the rebound. It's Jim Conley, the freshman, whose father also played for UMass. Another legacy of the Minuteman program. Jim's dad, Steve, on the 1969 undefeated team. UMass has had just one unbeaten team. That was the club. And Jim's dad played for Dick Garber. A lot of family ties here. Larbin, left-handed shot. Offered a piece of it. Possession continues. Play Staber. 
Garver, the right-hand cradle, near side of the box. First possession for either team. The National Semis underway from Philly. UMass getting all the loose balls off of these shots. This is a third shot opportunity. Brett Garber, a little bounce shot, stopped by Alfred We're on the natural surface here. Outlet pass for Ryan Clark with a long stick. Nice clear. Terps will be on their first offensive possession. A couple keys for the University of Maryland. Neutralized Jake Dean on faceoffs. He's been such a storyline for UMass this year. And then set the tone early. I think the first six minutes of this game is critical for Maryland. You know UMass is going to come out flying on adrenaline. And sometimes that adrenaline can lead to mistakes. You've got to capitalize early. Brendan Healy, number four in the white jersey. Off for Bill McGlone, top of the box. First possession for the Terps here. Mike Phipps had two goals in the quarterfinal win over Princeton. He had four goals total coming in, a big one against Bill Tierney's Tigers last weekend. The Ritz brothers are out there on this attack. Max number 10, Xander number 14. They're from Wayne, Pennsylvania, about 10 miles from where we are here in Philadelphia. You'll watch Healy will sweep here. He'll kick it behind the Walter send to Xander Ritz, and you'll see a pick. Healy a pass, and Xander Ritz with it. Now his brother Max, he's the sophomore. Xander the senior. There's the pick. He's got 33 goals this year. Brother Max got dumped down hard. UMass, a very good defensive team. Sam Moody. Short stick, D. Mitty, 22 in the dark jersey, is watching Xander Ritz right now. Sanders a captain, second leading scorer on this team behind the great Joe Walters. Goal line extended. No shot yet, though, for the Terps. What defense here for UMass? Maryland working out of their single invert with Ritz behind the cage. Jack Reed for UMass with the quick double team. Walters a pass. In front they go. Max Ritz, a save by Schneider. Doc Schneider, the freshman, tested for the first time. In a semi-final game, stands tall for the Minutemen. Now, here comes the clear. Cross-field pass of beauty from Krieger to Jacobina. Sam Moody, with a short stick, jumps into the box. Each team very effective in a clear game. UMass looks good early, Dave. Multiple shot first possession. Maryland gets their shot, but then Jack Reed comes up with a loose ball, and they clear efficiently. So any sign of jitters or nerves, not apparent. Both teams seem very calm. Quinn, I agree with you early on. Sun splash day here in Philadelphia. Expected to get up into the low 80s. Jamie Yeaman, the right hand cradle. Looks for Andrew Recchio. And here's Rory Pedrick, big hero last week. 49 seconds left in regulation against Hofstra at Stony Brook, the national quarters. He scored the game tie and goal. Conley won it. Staber. Recchione can't pull the trigger. Little scoop pass for Clay Stabert. Clay, number 10 of the dark jersey, has really stepped up in his senior year and produced a lot offensively for UMass. Pedrick, goal line extended. Here's Morris from Marshfield, Massachusetts, trying to jump in front. Double team, he got nailed. Steve Whitberg sat down hard on the turf and Sean Morris in a bit for his first tally of the game. Also, Charlie Wiggins got a good piece of him. That's the matchup that Maryland coach Dave Cottle feared the most. Can Wittenberg cover Sean Morris without out having to send some help? And that time it was Charlie Wiggins, who did time his double team, his slide very well, taking out Morris. Who will score the icebreaker here in the national semis? We'll find out. Second line midfield out for Dave Cottle, head coach of Maryland. Third appearance, four years, national semis. Drew Evans and Dan Gruder out there, a couple of freshmen who had big goals last week in the win over Princeton. Ritz shoots and scores! Xander Ritz has the first goal of this semifinal. Terps lead 1 0. A couple things to keep your eye on when Maryland goes into their invert package. That's Middies dodging behind the cage. UMass has been switching, and that time it's just Xander Ritz beating Brian Jacobina topside. You see how his stick is clear to shoot, and Schneider comes yeah, off that near post. We're and that's good. the book, talking right to Dave hand. Cottle this morning, he says, on right-handed drives, and we come around the back Wait, of the net, move. Dave, look for us to shoot Ray, to the near Ray, post. Bring it up, Ray, bring it up. Procedure Ray, call will go against Maryland there. There's Dave Cottle, the head coach. Xander's 34th goal of the season. 
Cottle in his 24th year overall coaching, fifth year at Maryland, and his fourth appearance with the Terps in the NCAAs. Led Loyola to a final back in 1990 after a long run with the Greyhounds. Thought his game plan last week in the quarterfinal. was absolutely masterful. His hey. team played to perfection. Question is, can they play at that high level two weeks in a row? Game of runs last week. Conley led UMass down five goals late against Hofstra. Jim Conley, the freshman, scores! Tricky shot, quick release by the freshman Conley, who was an unbelievable scorer in high school in North Andover, Massachusetts, when he scored 324 goals as a high school All-American. His father was the captain of the 1969 Minuteman squad. Watch, very similar to Ritz's goal, little finalizer move, gets himself an angle, and this field surface, it's a natural grass surface, it's based on sand, and let me tell you something, the ball really kicks. That's more like an AstroTurf hop right there. Ryan Clark from Long Beach, New York, gets that ground ball, possession, and face-off one by the Terps in a tie game. This is a shooter's field. Really gives the shooters a lot of options. They can skim the ball down low. You can use that overhand bouncer and get the ball to kick to the upper portions of the cage. Brenda Healy, he's a senior captain for Maryland. Top on the strength index charts for his size and weight. In the weight room, he has been unbelievable and a great student too. Headed to Ohio State Law School next year is Brendan Healy. Dave Cottle very proud of his academic accomplishments. Left hand shot there, hit hard. Sam Moody got a piece of him along with Dean. And the shot denied by Schneider. Jake Dean. Helps bring to the offensive end. He's the face-off ace. The Terminator is his nickname. Vanessa's trying to get to it. Ground ball. Anyone's ball here. A lot of contact. UMass, an unsettled situation. Here's Conley. He'll back it out and set up the offense. Ground ball play being dominated by UMass right now. They are the quicker team. Maryland, the bigger and more physical team. Talk to Bridget. Morris handles here left hand cradle behind the cage. Feeds all the move. Larman shot denied by Harry Alford. Big save on Pat Larman. Five saves early for Alford, who is a junior from Washington, D.C. Harry's got a twin brother on this team, Thomas. A short stick defensive midfielder, also a third line offensive midfielder for Dave Cottle's team. Jim Burrell helps bring in the offensive end for the Terps tie game. First quarter of the national semis. Just switch on picks. Pulls it out. Right. Here's the great Joe Walters. Goal line extended on that far side. Watched by Jacobina. Snaps off that shot over the crossbar. And it's backed up by the Terps. They'll keep possession. Here's Dave Cottle. He said, if UMass switches on the picks behind the cage, look for Joe Walters to take Reed as the pick man. So Joe Walters sets the pick, and that changes the matchup. He'll throw the ball back to Joe Walters right here, and now he'll dodge against the short stick. Walters had a goal, six points against Denver. First round became Maryland's all-time leading scorer that day. Feeding here, intercepted Dan Whipple makes a nice play. And he'll hand off for Reed. Nicely done by the defense again for UMass, seemingly anticipating a lot of the Maryland passes. Reed is a big-time player. I mean, a guy who'll be taken in the first round of the Major League Lacrosse draft on Wednesday. He is, when you play UMass, as Coach Greg Canella told me, he says, we think we have the best two players in college lacrosse, and Sean Morris on the offensive end, and Jack Reed on the defensive end. Greg Cannella played for legendary Dick Garber, and he told us this week when he spoke with him, he'd tell his team, just as the old coach would say, let the fur fly, let it all hang out, guys. There was some concern, as Rob told us about, in his on-field report, and UMass will get the big heads after making the semis for the first time. And right away, the veteran leaders like Sean Morris and Jack Reed told teammates on the field against Hofstra after they won that game, forget it, we got to move on now. And so far, so good for UMass. Feet in front, beautifully done. Pedrick scores! Over the shoulder shot, Rory Pedrick, what a goal! A thing of beauty, 2-1 UMass. Pedrick from Morris. UMass off the ball, they move, they, they cut. They flow through. 
Keep your eye in front of the goal in this area right here. You'll see Pedrick cut, catch, and puts it behind his back, which actually increases his angle. The tail end beats Harry Alford from close range. But off the ball against UMass, very difficult because they are hyper on offense. They cut through, they move. Your responsibility as a defender changes. Work it out of there. Work it out of there. Ball's gone. Big battle for the draw. Eventually, it's taken by UMass. You're going to hear our on-field officials, our mics, Reed charging in with a long stick, a shot, save made, rebound loose. Offer to die, Jack Reed of a goal, the senior captain from Connecticut. And out comes Maryland. Ryan Clark with a long stick. Cole has Dean into the box. A pass way over the head of Walters, about 15 feet too high, and a turnover. UMass gets it right back. You wondered what the emotions would be Dave Cottle's team, clearly more experienced than Greg Canellas. So settle down, guys, settle down. But right now, Maryland is the team that's flat. They're being outplayed significantly. They're lucky the score is only two to one. Pedrick, the game tire, 49 okay, seconds left last week in the Hofstra game. He's got a brother who plays for Springfield College, Derek. Good start offensively here for Pedrick and UMass. Incredibly enough, heading into this game, Rory was the second leading scorer on the team, but 40 points behind Morris. Darmore, 66 points this year, final five player for the Twarton, the Heisman Trophy of Cause the Cross. The second midfield, such a big story for UMass. Most teams stack their first midfield. You'll see Virginia later today. This Maryland team has a stacked first midfield, but the second midfield unit for UMass, 65 points. It's the best second midfield unit in the nation. And Recchio works for Stabert. Play trying to get free. Shot there, Pedrick, a nice save by Harry Alford. Rakes it into the safety of his crease. They'll start the outlet for Wittenberg. Steve Wittenberg, number 24 in the white jersey, a transfer from Air Force. Played football and lacrosse at Air Force. Very good student. And despite the fact the Air Force football coach Fisher to Barry asked him to stay on, it was just too demanding. Two sports plus the academic rigors and the disciplined lifestyle of the Air Force Academy out in Colorado. Talking to defensive coordinator Dave Slavkovsky of Maryland, said there's no gray area with Steve. He's got a military background. Everything is either black and white, and that's kind of the way he approaches playing defense. Terps on the attack. Healy and Ritz work for McGlone. No McGlone, a senior player you like to be a high draft pick in the MLL draft coming up next week. I think McGlone needs to push to the net a little today for himself. He's being covered by David Von Voigt. Walters a shot, reflected away. Von Voigt, as we mentioned, back in the UMass lineup starting. He was out a couple of games. Brian Danvers had started for him, a calf injury, had sidelined Von Voigt, number 44 in the red jersey. Phipps, here's Walters, quick shot, but nowhere close to the cage. It is backed up by the Turks. Walters, like any good shooter, will take some outside shots just to draw the respect of the defense. And later on in this game, you'll see him pump fake that same shot and maybe try to dance around his man. Had a long chat with Joe this week. Ritz driving in. Stick deflected last second. Reed got a piece of him. Sam Moody in the way as well. As Xander Ritz derailed in a bit for a second tally of this first quarter. Hey, Ritz got put down after the shot late by Reed. No call here. Watch the quick little move. Little face dodge inside, and then he's nailed from behind, right in front of the official. That is a push, at the least. Whistle and Xander Ritz has an equipment issue. He's the goal scorer for Maryland. Gotta make sure the mouthpiece is in and the chin strap is buckled right to meet the regulations. And that was from that hit after the shot. Here it is again. Ball's out of the stick, 1,001. Boom, he's jacked up from behind. Jack Reed, according to his coach, Greg Canella is the most intense person he's ever been around. In pregame, Jack does not want to speak to anyone. Wears his Oakley sunglasses, has heavy metal on the headphones going, and it's blasted. He's in his own little world. He just rocked the world of Xander Ritz a moment ago. That was quite a shot. Microphones all on the field, on the goal. Switch! That's why you're getting such great on-field audio here. Our officials are mic'd. You hear the calls from Doc Schneider, the goalie. Ritz, pass, goes for Walters. Healy a blast. Fourth save 
Early going, Doc Snyder, and rakes it back into the crease. Nicely done by the freshman out by Jack Davina. Here comes UMass on the move. He's run settled. UMass likes it. Transition lacrosse, winds up. Bounces in, saved by Alford. What a play on Jack Avina. And here come the Terps the other way. Point blank save made. Beautifully done, Harry Alford. That was something else. Ryan Lang brings in a shot and a score. With a long stick, Ryan Clark. He cranked that one at 86 miles an hour. We're tied up. Talk about a two-point play made by Harry Alford. Jacobina comes down on the fast break. He stuffs him. Then at the other end, you counter-attack counter transition. Clark receives the ball from Ryan Lang. I thought he was going to kick it to the far side to Joe Walters. This is two saves before that. An excellent possession by the Terps. Healy makes the stop, but the freshman, Doc Schneider, comes up big. Fans loving the end-to-end -end action, Dave. Alford. This ball goes in by Jacobina. Does the little dip and dunk, little head fake right there. Alford ignores the fake, and next thing you know, the outlet to Ryan Lang. He kicks it to Clark. And we're tied up. Huge point. Mark the VCRs on that one. First goal of the season for Ryan Clark. Could not have come at a better time for Maryland. He had four assists coming in later today. On ESPN2, available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Warrior Lacrosse, Syracuse, Virginia. Can the Cavaliers continue to run the table? They lead the nation in scoring. 15.8 goals a game. They've won all 15 games this year. Syracuse has won nine straight games. In my opinion, battle of the two best teams still standing in college lacrosse. Second semifinal today, SU and UVA, 2 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. Great matchup. <laughs> That'll be fun to watch. Speaking of end and lacrosse, nothing quite like unsettled play that we saw a moment ago. Basketball and grass. These two coaches will approach this game in a different fashion. Dave Cottle, more of a strategic guy, trying to analyze the way UMass is playing defense. They're switching on picks, so he'll tailor his offense to create mismatches, to change the matchups anytime they switch. Meanwhile, Greg Canella, his focus is effort. This UMass team, they are playing for a lot of UMass players in the last 20 years who didn't get an opportunity to play on this stage. Great players like Sal Lacasio and Brooke Sweet, Mark Millen and Scott Hiller. As I said, it's an opportunity for our kids to kind of give back to those players of, uh, of the last two or three decades. Greg told us this week, emails have come in from all over the place. UMass alums, even a former baseball player who tragically enough had his mother's funeral in Amherst the weekend of the quarterfinals last week. And Greg said, an amazing story, that the player emailed him and said, thanks for winning the game and making our family's weekend with our funeral a little easier. It really lightened up the atmosphere and the attitude and he said, just keep on winning. Matt Palin, one of our three officials, has that call. And a violation means that the ball here to UMass. Saw the 43 in the helmets. That is a tribute to Eric Soprakasa, soup they called him, who in 1999 was struck in the chest by a ball, unfortunately passed away. And the Heart and Hustle Award is still a tribute to Eric Soprakasa at UMass. Very coveted honor every season for UMass players. And I know the Soprakasa family is watching. They've done some amazing work in terms of getting defibrillators at lacrosse games, whether it's youth, high school, or college, and, and they continue to kind of push forward in, in, in Eric's memory. Under a minute left, fading first quarter clock here from Philadelphia. Here's Garber. Brett Garber had the assist on the Conley game winner last week to beat Hofstra. I want to talk about some long faces on Long Island. There was some serious disappointment. Morris forgot the ball, taken back by Wittenberg. Terps have plenty of time here for one last attack to end the first quarter. Holmes threw that away, Whipple a ground ball. Grab back though by the long stick of Ray McGill. Final moments, first quarter here. Under 10 seconds, Walters, can he squeeze off a shot? All-time leading score, it's McGlone. Sets up, bounce shot, not close. Over the crossbar. And that'll do it for the first 15 minutes. Bill McGlone shut out last week in the victory over Princeton in the quarterfinals. Cannot get on the board with that shot, but Xander Ritz and Maryland off to a great start.
He's got one goal. Ryan Clark the other. Jim Conley, Warren Penrick have tallied for UMass after 15 minutes. All square and two. So, Mater, now that you're a big star, you're gonna need an agent. Yeah, McQueen, to get me into all them big parties and find me a shack in the hills and... <laughs> hey, I can't see! Actually, you need a different kind of agent, maybe a good neighbor. Call a State Farm agent and get the good neighbor service you can count on anytime, anywhere. And check out Cars, the new Disney Pixar film, only in theaters. I feel better already. Since 1989, Coca-Cola has provided more than $35 million in college scholarships. And as the NCAA's first corporate champion, Coca-Cola proudly supports 88 NCAA championships in 23 sports for 360,000 student athletes every year. Satisfying a thirst for learning, both in the classroom and on the field. The Coca-Cola Company and the NCAA. All his life, he served the rich. You don't belong here. He had nothing but a dream. All I want is a chance. Did you hear about the caddy playing in the open? You're a caddy. But he'll go from working for them. What's that carrying his bag? A pygmy? You got a problem? To trying to beat them. He's just trying to make you proud. At their own game. Walt Disney Pictures presents the greatest game ever played. Based on a true story. Rated PG. Let Satanta Sports be your home for the 2006 FIFA World Cup. Watch our FIFA World Cup countdown with profiles on every nation involved, as well as a look back on the greatest tournaments ever. Join us from the 9th of June for live coverage of this summer's FIFA World Cup in Germany. The 2006 FIFA World Cup from Germany, live on Satanta Sports with German commentary. For a full game schedule, visit Satanta.com. NCAA Championships on ESPN2. The Division I Men's Lacrosse Championship, presented by Warrior. The means to dominate. And in part by The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. And Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Beautiful day here in Philadelphia. Starting the second quarter at the link. We are all tied 2-2. Shots are 2-2, or 10-10 after one quarter of play. Sean Morris so far held in check here, Quinn. To our time finalist, and that banquet is on Thursday. Sean Morris, one assist so far to Rory Pedrick. Great story, Sean Morris coming over from Rutgers his freshman year. Let's head back down to Rod Simulcare. And Dave, no player in college lacrosse has been more important to his team's offense than Sean Morris. He accounts for almost 30% of UMass's goals this season. Maryland coaching staff very happy with the job they're doing so far on him. Only one assist kept out of goals so far, so that's a good sign for Maryland as far as they're concerned. Dave, take a look at the way Maryland is guarding him. Steve Wittenberg, you see the quick change of direction, and then he needs some help with the double team. Wittenberg got away with a hold right there. Big question mark, can you cover Sean Morris with one man? I give Morris credit to watching him play four or five times this year. He lets the game come to him. He's not the type of player who just goes, goes, goes. He kind of feels out the opponent, and, he, and he'll put in a full 60 minutes, as you saw against Hofstra, you saw earlier this year against Georgetown. Team switch ends here, unseated UMass, dark uniforms. Maryland, two seed in this tournament. We started with 16 teams in the NCAA championship this year. Division one, two, and three well, right. titles will all be crowned here at the link this weekend. First of two semifinals, division one here today. Syracuse, Virginia to follow. Backward. Off the procedure call. Backward. Against UMass, Maryland first possession. Backward. And they can take the air out of it to get that high percentage shot. Here's McGlone, top of the box. Gets the pick. And throws it away. Bad pass, Maryland offensive end. They're usually known for that very crisp passing game that's so effective. First quarter to quarter data, it was UMass early in that quarter who put up a bunch of shots, but by the end of the quarter, Maryland reeled them in 10 apiece. Face-offs in that first quarter. Jake Dean won four of his five draws. That is a huge number to keep your eye on as we progress. He was 20 for 25 was Jake Dean 
with a long well, stick well, well, in the X last weekend. Face-offs for UMass, seven for seven in the fourth quarter. And that's what makes lacrosse different. That's why, that's why it becomes a game of runs. When you score, you can get the ball back if you win the next face-off. You can't do that in football. You can't do that in basketball. That's why lacrosse. Morris scores! We just talked about Sean Morris needing to get going for UMass. Well, there it is. The senior from Marshfield, Massachusetts. The transfer from Rutgers, who started his career as a Scarlet Knight, finishes as a Minuteman here trying to win a national championship. Morris likes to talk about having the blue-collar mentality. You'll see he's top left, and you get a nice clear through here, which creates a whole alley for him. And he just scores from the perimeter. That's one that Harry Alford has got to be responsible for. Steve Wittenberg's in pretty good position. I think Harry Alford was caught off guard with the velocity. Remember, Morris played a lot of midfield as a sophomore, even some last year. And so he's comfortable operating in front of the cage as well as behind. Mark gets possession. Ryan with a long stick scoring for Maryland to, at that point, tie the game at two of his second career goal. You've got to make Sean Morris a passer. You saw the one Maryland defender step up and almost fake the double team and then pull back. I say go. Morris, a great high school football player in Massachusetts. Went to Rutgers to play for then coach Bill Durgin, who left almost immediately in 2001. As soon as Sean got to campus, he went to Loyola. And Sean, we spoke with him this week, was very upset at that. He and his father had hopes of a great career at Rutgers. Didn't work out. Instead, the transfer. But Greg Canella said he recruited him heavily out of Marshfield. Would always have a spot for you, Sean, when you want to return. <laughs> Morris did, and he's become one of the all-time great Minutemen players. And now they're in the semis for the first time in school history. It's worked out pretty well for Sean Morris and UMass. Go, go, go. See it back left. Maxwell Ritz works for Joe Walters. He grew up in Rochester going to every single Syracuse home game in the carrier. But he tells us not heavily recruited by the Orange. Okay, Maryland, look up. Here's Jack Maryland's stick skills today are rusty. The passing is not accurate. Easy 10-yard passes are thrown into the dirt. Last week, I thought their stick skills and, and, and their efficiency on offense was, was near perfection. Today, very sloppy. Yeah, they do not look in sync at all. It's a pretty good start offensively. Fourth turnover, first half from Maryland. UMass just has two in the early going. That would be worrisome if you're Dave Connell because the team relies on strong, deliberate offensive possessions that take time and require crisp passing. Recchione for Morris, here's Sean. Sharp angle shot, side of the goal, not in. As he ripped that one up, trying to sneak it inside the pipe. But Harry Alford had the angle shut down well. Harry Alford so eager to play well here this year. Last year in the semifinals against Duke, he only made eight saves, surrendered 18 goals. Tough way to end your season. Certainly means a lot to him. He and his brother recruited by other schools, both good football players in Washington, D.C., prep school kids. But once the Maryland offer came, he said they threw the rest of the recruiting letters into the garbage. McGlone spin, trying to get free. Nice defense, UMass. Bill McGlone charging. Over the shoulder shot. Deflected away there. Look at the effort by UMass, trying to be the closest to it. McGlone did get there, but Reed and Whipple just laying out that. It is incredible intensity. McGlone, an excellent high school basketball player. When he's able to freelance and create on his own outside of the system, he's most dangerous. A shot going off the midsection of Rob, excuse me, Doc Schneider. There is McGlone. Was quiet last week. Bill McGlone, no goals against Princeton. Doc Schneider continuing to surpass expectations. Freshman came in. He was in a battle for the starting spot. Next thing you know, he's one of the tops in the nation in terms of save percentage. Timeout called by the Terps here, and Dave Cottle trying to settle down his offense, which uncharacteristically has had some issues. Hey, 3-2 game here in the first half. Hey, seven. Wait, seven. Talked about Joe Walters. He really had dreamed of going to Syracuse and playing for the Orange under the Teflon roof of the Carrier Dome. Three shots, no goals for him so far. As you spoke of him this week, means so much to bring Maryland 
to a potential title. Yeah, and not just to get here. They've been here before in the senior class. And you talk to Walters, talk to Dave Powell about Walters, he says, Joe knows he's good. And Joe, it's interesting that Syracuse didn't recruit him coming out of that area. And sometimes what happens is when you play in the backyard of the college, they see so much of you that they find flaws in your game. They find the imperfections. Dave Cottle was recruiting Joe Walters to go to Loyola College when Cottle bumped over to take the Maryland head coaching job when Dick Adele retired. And Walters followed Coach Cottle to College Park. Joe will be on Team USA for the World Outdoor Championships, London, Ontario, to be coached by Syracuse coach John Desco, the only collegiate player on that roster. Duke's Matt Donowski will be a reserve on that team, an alternate. But Walters told us what a huge honor that is. But he and Coach Desco, we spoke with him this week, said, uh, that's on the back burner right now. I'm thinking about the national semifinals. It amazes me when you meet Joe Walters. Not that big. And the power is that he is able to generate from that shot. And hopefully we'll, we'll be able to catch him on our radar gun, you know, in the upper 90s. But it comes from being smooth. It's like a, a great golf shooter. You know, it's the smoothness in his motion. It, it's not about the size of the muscles, but it's about the efficiency of his delivery. He spends an awful lot of time practicing. Right now on the sideline, he's working with that stick. Probably doesn't like the way the ball's sitting in the pocket. Trying to get that good feel. He'll pound the ball up against the wall for 20 minutes before a game starts. Actually, he's taking a breather right now as Joe Walters. His family runs Mama San's Restaurant, which is a Thai Vietnamese restaurant in Rochester, New York. His sister is running the restaurant while mom and dad are here. Ritz. Right, squeeze off a shot, passing instead, broken up. What the UMass defense has had every answer so far. The intercept and another turnover. Here's Sam Moody at the midfield line. Collapsing defense has been everywhere. They're so aggressive. Too many Maryland Terrapins on the perimeter just standing around, allowing their man to condense, as you said, allowing their man to create havoc and double team. Jack Avina trying to get free. White. Marmon will work out top of the box for Garber. Here's Staber. You look at so many of these Minutemen, they don't pass the eyeball test. Bunch of water bugs, 5'8", five 5'9", five guys. But they're believing, they're scrappy, scrappy bunch. They watched Rocky on the bus ride here. Staber, one and two, three points last week. Upset win against Hofstra. Hofstra and John Donowski lost two games all year. Both? It's to UMass, right, season opener, and the quarterfinals last week. Gut-wrenching defeat for the Pride. Quick shot sent wide by Larman to the left of Harry Alford, backed up by Morris. And UMass keeps it. Here comes the matchup, Sean Morris and Steve Wittenberg. Final five to Wharton Trophy. Who will win it? Morris spins free. Double team that hit hard. McGlone nailed him. Nice recovery on defense for him. Wittenberg was there, help from Sadowski, and they were able to deflect the ball out of the cross of Sean Morris. That's exactly what it's going to take to stop Sean Morris. Actually triple teamed him and give Steve Wittenberg a lot of credit. He took away the top side and rolled him underneath, knowing that he had help. The key to that help is you got to be physical inside. Take the body, put Sean Morris down, much like hockey. Next time he'll have second thoughts about taking it to the heart of your defense. Dan Groot and Travis Holmes work around the perimeter of the box here. We've had just one goal in the second quarter. Morris made it 3-2. Maryland jumped out to the 1-0 lead on the Xander Ritz tally. Jim Conley tied it 1-1 for UMass. Then Pedrick, UMass made it 2-1. Wyatt Clark's first of the year. With a long stick, made it 2-2. That's where he stands. 3-2 in the second. Phipps gets the pick from Ritz. But Michael will not attack the cage here. Got to move the ball when you're double teamed. Xander Ritz speeding in front. Looking for Maxwell's younger brother again. It's broken up. Now Jack Avina, who's got tremendous speed. Versatile player. He was the team MVP last year. Great outlet pass for big Jack Reed. Senior captain. Jack Reed wears a gorilla tattoo on his leg. To signify he's a member of the Garber's Gorillas. Named after legendary coach Dick Garber. Dick passed away in 1992. Dad 
of Brett Ted took over the program as head coach. Coached for 35 years, 1955 to 1990, over 300 wins. Greg Canella keeps it within the UMass family. Recchione, Yeaman, Pedrick, and a spectacular goal in the first quarter over the shoulder shot. Mass on the attack. Conley a nice fake. Quick shot, Recchione was blocked. Never got there. Clark got a piece of it. So did Holmes. Ball for grabs. Here's Holmes. Short stick, defensive midfielder, works for Walters. And the Terps with a ground ball lead for UMass. Have the ball back in the offensive end. Very impressed with the defense from UMass. We know about Jack Reed, big number 18. He can dominate his matchup. It's the other guys who've got question marks. Von Voigt, Krieger, Moody. Whipple. They are showcasing some excellent one-on-one -on -one defense, Dave. Third line midfielders out there now. Hargist, Thomas Alford, Hartopoulos. As Dave Cottle has told us, he likes to get those third line middies out there in the offensive end for a couple of possessions. Give his top two midfield lines a chance to take a breather here. If they can eat up some minutes, not make too many mistakes. That works out well for them. Walters free for a second. Hargist. Thomas Alford, he is the twin brother of goalie Harry. He's an excellent high school football player. Linebacker. Topless. One of many in that family to play college across. Argus thought about a shot instead of feet in front. But Max Ritz will not turn and pull the trigger. Nice defense by Sam Moody on a slide. This third midfield line for Maryland, though, that little spark here. Better ball movement, believe it or not. Yeah, no mistakes with the passes. Less standing around. Xander Ritz for Hargis. Maxwell Ritz. Officials tell them they got to keep it in the box because it's just too much time. Out of the box, turnover. Walters doesn't get much. Muster on the shot at all. Whipple picks up the ground ball. He was bumped as he released the shot with Joe Walters, and he couldn't release that trademark laser beam shot. Now it's Krieger with a long stick. Nice ball handling UMass. Midfield. Von Voigt can't find the handle. Ground ball. Thomas Alford got in the way. Unsettled situation. Walters will bring across the midfield strike for the Terps. Excellent hustle by Maryland. And this is where they can be dangerous. They're going to sub this third midfield group out right now and bring the big guys back on. But I like what I saw from Hargist and, and Alford. Good ball movement. Crisp passing. Better off ball movement as well. Maryland's standing around without the ball. It, it, it's Bill McGlone with the ball right now. Everyone else is just standing there watching him isolate. Not a lot of movement. Looks like a. Remember last year's semifinals, Duke just blasted him. In this same game, same stadium. The elite free. Bounce shot wide of Schneider. Not even on cage. So sloppy passing, and the shot's not hitting the target. That's where Healy can be dangerous. You talk about a guy who's shooting the ball well. This time of year, it's Brendan Healy. UMass takes a timeout here. 129 left in the first quarter. The last goal allowed by the UMass defense. That's scored by Ryan Clark. Unsettled situation with a long stick for the Terps. Since then, it has been UMass and the defense, but still a one-goal game. Coming to you from Lincoln Financial Field, presented by Warrior Lacrosse. Division One Men's Lacrosse National Championship weekend. UMass Maryland. Dave Ryan, Wood Kessler, Rob Simulcare on the field. A great crowd expected, possibly record crowds. Well, last year in the semifinals, it was all Duke second rank. They were undefeated coming in. Johns Hopkins was the top ranked team looking for that undefeated run to a championship, which happened. Bill McGlone and Maryland got to a good start, Quint, but after that, it was all Duke. Yeah, Maryland had beaten Duke in the ACC final, and this was a really kind of a revenge game for Duke. They got off to a great start. They led 5-1, to one, and the Terps had no answers for Matt Danowski and Matt Zash. And Duke rolled into the NCAA Finals, an impressive winner. Tony McDevitt tying up Joe Walters. But once Duke got the separation in that game, once they got their big lead, they were really never threatened. Joe Walters did have a hat trick, but it all came way too late. Zach Greer had four goals, a fabulous freshman a year ago for Duke. 
And they won at 18-9 on route to the finals, lost by a goal to Hopkins. Our Coke Zero storyline, three shots, nothing doing point-wise for Joe Walters. UMass defense, wow. Shutdown mode right now. Can they keep this defensive intensity going? Love what you're seeing from Jack Breed, but the supporting cast has been impressive. Brian Jacovina, that, that kid makes a ton of plays, whether it's one-on-one -on -one defense, ground balls, coming in from the wing of face-offs. He has been spectacular so far today. And Jack Reed right in the huddle. The intense player who, great story, when he was a freshman, they were about to play one of their last games of the year, senior day, Rutgers was visiting. Jack Reed noticed during warm-ups that the Rutgers players had their shirts off and were sunning themselves on the UMass bench. He went to the seniors as a freshman in the locker room pregame. He said, do I have permission to speak here? They said, go ahead. Those guys were sunning themselves on our bench. That can't happen. Sure enough, UMass got pumped up and upset Rutgers that day. Let's go back down to Rob. Well, Jack Reed is such an important player for this UMass team. His job is to take out the opponent's top gun. Today, obviously, that is Joe Walters. Walters has not found the net so far today, and uh, he held to Wharton nominee of Cornell, Joe Belucos, to one goal in that game. So he has been a big factor for this team, and he's playing well so far today. A defensive blanket is 18 in the red jersey so far. What a hit that was. Healy got nailed by guess who? Jack Reed on cue after the report. Penalty flag drop. First time all day. We'll have a man up. It'll be for Maryland. Matt Palin has our call. The glow double team. Balls on the ground. Touched up here by UMass. That means the whistle blows when they get possession. There it is. And we'll have our first EMO. Extra man opportunity for UMass. It's a slight difference in the rule this year on a delayed foul call. When the ball goes down on the ground, you don't see the whistle. That's a clean hit by Jack Green. That's what it's going to take. Brendan Healy, Alley dodge right here, the shot, and he gets lit up. The foul is right here from Diago Godea to push with possession. Jogo Godoy. Jogo Godoy. It's a tough one, I know. It's as tough as it gets. He is born in Brazil, believe it or not, and speaks Portuguese. Moved to New Hampshire when he was about three years old has the Brazilian flag tattooed on his arm. Jogo Godoy. Dangerous Maryland extra man here. 30 second technical call, pushing violation. Here come the Turks. Maybe this will give them a little light at the end of the tunnel. They have struggled mightily here, but still only down by one goal, anyone's game. And I imagine that's comforting to Dave Cottle since they haven't played their best game by far. Penalty releases. About to be six on six, lacrosse Walters free. Thought about cranking. Joe Walters a shot again, partially deflected. I'm really impressed with UMass collapsing defense, getting a piece on the Maryland shooter sticks. At the last second, they're flying to the ball, getting some body. There was a great poke check by Jack Reed to get to the hands of Joe Walters. Jack Reed, last year named the UMass Male Athlete of the Year for good reason. He is intense. His dad was a lacrosse player at Yale. Grandfather played football at Yale. Football mentality, quick shot. Ripped wide there by Xander Ritz, bidding for his second. Possession time starting to wear a little. You see Jack Reed with his hands on his knees. How long can you play at this intensity level without taking a break on the sideline? And Maryland known, they played a bunch of offensive players last week. They played six short stick defenders, three midfield lines. They're a deep team. Lone calls out the set. Outside the box, 33 in the white jersey. Trying to get something going offensively for the struggling Turks. Pips had two last week against Princeton. Here's Healy. Got the great speed. McLone winds, shoots, and again off cage. So many times they've missed the target. Maryland shooters not having the range here. Shot so far. UMass has a 9-7 shot on goal advantage right now. Under two to go. Melting second quarter clock. Close game. The tempo quit certainly playing into the favor of Maryland right now, but they just need to be more crisp with their play. But that is symbolic of what you've seen all day. One guy trying to go through three different defenders. Everyone else on the perimeter standing around watching. Ground ball, Krieger can't find the handle. Godoy will. Brazilian born. 
and a star here in the States. Lost the handle last second, though, taken back by Maryland. Good ride by the Terps. And UMass can't bust out. Just over a minute to go. Turnover numbers as well. Top of your screen. Fundamentally, UMass has all sorts of advantages in this game. Tempo-wise, and with a score just at 3-2, we got to favor Maryland. Timeout right called by the Terps. Dave Cottle's got to figure out what he wants to do with this last 45 seconds. He's also got to figure out at halftime what, what he's got to do to interject some life into his offense. Big picture to tell you about. Virginia Syracuse, the next game coming up on ESPN2. It's available on ESPN2 HD as well. National semifinals, all leading to the championship game Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Available on ESPN HD. We started with 16 teams. We are down to four. So this one takes on the winner of Syracuse and UVA. For the official results from every NCAA championship, including a complete recap of this lacrosse championship weekend, go to NCAAsports.com, NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. What a crowd today, and there are the Syracuse Orange players watching the action, taking in the atmosphere. Syracuse did not make the national semis last year. 22 year streak was snapped by Massachusetts in the first round, but the Orange is back. One in four at the end of March. They didn't win a game in the month of March. They've won nine straight games. They've learned how to win. They're developing some young talent after having some injury issues early in the year. During the regular season, they lost to Virginia 20 to 15. So we expect some fireworks in game two. Both offenses should uh, should be dominant. We could see a, a game with potentially, uh, you know, I'm guessing around 30 goals, Dave. Plenty of fans have made the trip. Route 81 South to the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Four and a half hours from Central New York. Coming up later today, Syracuse, Virginia, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, presented by Warrior Lacrosse. Our halftime report is coming your way as well from the NCAA Championship Studio. Dave Revson, Lee Felsmo. To Warren Award candidates, there are five left. Winning championships, what's that all about? And we'll find out. The guys in the studio at the half. To our ton trophy, the Heisman Trophy, it's the Mac Herman Trophy, the John Wooden Trophy, or the Hodge Trophy for you wrestling fans. Very nice. Wrestling reference. Chris Understein of Hofstra. Joe Walters playing here for Maryland. Matt Ward, Kyle Dixon. We'll see them in the second game from Virginia. And Sean Morris of UMass. Five finals. June 1st, we'll find out in Washington, D.C. who wins this year's to work. Final moments, first half. Fifteen to go. Terps would love to have one here. Create some momentum in their locker room. They're going to have to hurry. Under ten seconds. Healy, a pass. Joe Walters going to get free. Crank shoots. Side of the net. No goal. And that'll do it for the first half. He never really got a good look at Doc Schneider, who did a tremendous job in shutting the door on the UMAP Maryland. Snipers the entire first half and Dave Cottle will have a lot of work to do in the locker room When rain frost ice snow and road grime restrict your visibility look to science for the solution Introducing the all-new revolutionary rain clear by glass science Rain clear is the world's first dual action cleaner and rain repellent that automatically improves visibility 100% in just one step. See how rain clear dramatically improves your visibility and driving safety. Watch how water beads up and rolls off glass treated with patented rain clear. Only rain clear keeps glass rain free, snow free, frost free, and grime free. As a mom, wife, and chauffeur, I won't drive without rain clear. It's my lifesaver. Safety is important to me. That's why I use Rain Clear, and so should you. Rain Clear is the first cleaner with a long-lasting invisible shield that repels rain, sleet, and snow on contact for improved visibility, less dirt, less cleaning, and better wiper performance. This miracle in a bottle is the only glass product you'll ever need to see clearly and drive safer in all kinds of weather. What's amazing is Rain Clear is so easy to use. Just spray and wipe until crystal clear. Use Rain Clear on windshields, side and rear windows, mirrors and lights on your car, truck, boat, or RV. Call and order your Rain Clear now for just $19.95. That's a six-month supply. 
But wait, if you call right now, we'll double your order. That's right, a full year supply of driving safety. And that's not all. Call right now and we'll include the amazing glass scrub to take off the worst buildup of bugs, tar, and road grime. And the incredible fog clear that puts an end to interior fogging. And as an additional gift, we'll also include these versatile nano wipers and professional glass squeegee for wet or dry cleaning for the home and auto. This rain clear special is not available in any stores and is backed by a 100% money back guarantee. If these products are not the best you've ever used, simply return them for a full refund. All this over a $40 value for just $19.95. So call right now. Call 1-800-379-7785. Call now. Women's lacrosse semis last night, the Duke team wearing wristbands with the uniform numbers of the three Duke men's players who have been accused in that highly publicized case, a show of support for their schoolmates. Duke was the top-seeded team in the tourney, but they were knocked off by the fourth seed, defending national champ Northwestern 11-10 in overtime. Wildcats face Dartmouth for the title tomorrow. We got a bit of an upset brewing in our game right now in Philadelphia. UMass on top of Maryland 3-2. Leaf keys for the second half. Well, second half, the big guys have to step up, and you've got Joe Walters, the all-time leading scorer at Maryland. He has to win that matchup against Jack Reed. He hasn't done it yet. He has been really stuck. See that? There's a shot by Walters. He has not been accurate. He has not been that good on the offensive end. Credit Jack Reed. But he has to score, and I'm going to say right now the key is really the midfield. Brendan Healy, number four, has been unstoppable for the last six games. Three goals in each of those games he has not had the ball and challenged to get good shots it has to start in the midfield Walters will be a factor but McGlone and Healy have to get it going well, those guys trying to get the Terps to the championship game for the first time since 1998 UMass trying to become the first team ever from the six states in New England to make it to the title game and they are only one half away from doing just that we'll get you out to the second half in Philadelphia momentarily Sean Morris the Tawaratan finalist with a goal there for UMass. It's the Minutemen. A shocker developing. They're up 3-2 at the half. Do you practice, 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 but still can't make a shot? Now go from nothing to nothing but net instantly. Introducing Coach Herb McGee's Nothing But Net, the most comprehensive basketball shooting system ever offered. Coach McGee and Nothing But Net, it will definitely make you a better shooter. With 40 years of coaching experience and more than 800 wins, Coach McGee has developed an easy-to-follow system packed with powerful tips. Coach McGee's private clinics can cost hundreds of dollars, but with Nothing But Net, it's like having a personal training session with one of the winningest coaches ever. How good is Coach McGee? So good that both my son and daughter got college scholarships to Duke and Notre Dame. Coach McGee made the difference for my two kids, and Nothing But Net will make the difference for yours. Call toll-free now to order Coach Herb McGee's Nothing But Net system in VHS or DVD for $19.95. Order now, and you'll also get Nothing But Net drills and additional $20 value free. Yeah, I have a little attitude, but I've earned it. I put in the hours. I practice every day. I've learned from the best and I have no doubt that I can play at the highest level. Right now, I'm guessing I'll end up in either Chicago or New Orleans. Most good jazz musicians do. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us are going pro in something other than sports. Every day, Progressive does something that's, well, progressive. They have this ticker that shows their car insurance rates and their top competitors. Right now on Progressive.com, you can see actual rates that people are getting. Sometimes Progressive is the lowest. Sometimes they're not. Hey, if they're this helpful when you're shopping for car insurance, imagine how they'll be once you're a customer. Jason from California. Kathy, Michigan. Today, thousands of people will go to Progressive.com, where they'll get their quote for car insurance and see what other people have been quoted as well. Whether Progressive is the highest or the lowest, you'll see it all. Go to Progressive.com, because the more you know, the easier it is to make a smart decision. What a day to start off championship weekend in Philadelphia, Lincoln Financial Field. Jammed. 
could have 50,000 today in attendance, which would set an all-time lacrosse record. 3-2 UMass at the half. Well, Quint Kresnick, the fifth time all year. UMass, and their great defense, has held a foe to two goals or less. They really have every answer for Maryland's offense so far. Yeah, they shut them out for 16 minutes and 29 seconds. Maryland's getting some shots. They have 18 shots, only two goals. They're shooting 11%. Many of those shots are from the outside. They're rushed, and they're being hit or checked as they're shooting the ball. Let's join Rob Civil Care on the field now, joined by Maryland coach Dave Cobb. All right, thank you, Dave. Uh, coach Cottle, you're getting shots, but you're not finding the net right now. What do you have to do to increase the scoring in the second half? Well, we've only hit the goal seven out of 18 shots. The big thing for us is I think the ball's dying in our sticks a little bit, and the guy with the ball is trying to make the play. We've got to throw a couple more passes and then attack right now, and it's time for our seniors to step up, and I think they will. Joe Walters, obviously, one of those guys you're talking about. What do you need to do to get his game moving a little bit here in the second half? I just need something good to happen to him. You know, his heart's in the right place, but right now he's throwing the ball all over the field. So we just got to calm down and make some plays and have some success, and then he'll start playing much better. Okay, thank you, Coach. Dave, back up to you. All right, thanks, and thanks to Coach Connell. That certainly has been one problem, his team misfiring. But Xander Ritz, a good start for the Terps to get him going. one nothing here. Quint. Xander Ritz on the invert, then Jim Connolly, the left-handed bouncer, were tied at one. Rory Pedrick behind the back. Sean Morris with the assist. Ryan Clark from Ryan Lang in transition off the fast break. And then Morris, the only goal of that second quarter. UMass leads 3-2 to two in a game that's been a little slow tempo-wise. Good goaltending, though. Harry Alford going down to his knees, taking that one off the chest. you got to be impressed with the freshman. And there's Alford again. The freshman I'm mentioning is Doc Schneider. Big save right there against Ritz. Schneider, the guy plays like he's been here 10 times. He's just so poised, so confident. And UMass has played terrific physical defense in front of the goal. Most of the Maryland shots have come from the perimeter, from the wings, from up top. And watch what happens after you shoot it. Big Jack Reed, he's been there to greet you. 16 minutes and 29 seconds of scoreless offense for Maryland. Numbers after 30 minutes here, Quint. Faceoffs are close. Jake Reed, tremendous against Hofstra in the quarterfinals last week for UMass in that category. Ground ball's dead even. Turnovers are tight as well, as is a score, 3-2 at the half. So in my opinion, as much as Maryland has struggled, and Coach Kyle said that with Rob a moment ago, they're right in this lacrosse game, just down by one. It's, I'd be a bit concerned if I were UMass. It's a good news, bad news scenario. Maryland, we're playing horribly, yet it's a one-goal game. UMass, we can't play any better, and yet we only lead by one. Underway, second half. Terps is the second seed in the home whites. UMass unseeded, the only unseeded team left in the national semis now. Visiting uniforms. Massachusetts has never been this far. The national semis. Maryland here for the third time in four years. But they haven't won a title since 1975. School has won two, two ever. 73 and 75 their titles have come. You look at this Maryland team in terms of their shooting and their 12 wins this year, 29% shooters. In their losses, only 15. They're below that 15 right now. They're shooting 11%. Coach Connell knows that's got to change second half. Healy gets the pick. Said it's a pass for Walters. They're a great score. No points. First half, Joe Walters. There's nothing that's changed strategically. All season, teams have been bumping poles up to cover Brendan Healy and Billy McGlone. They put the shorties on Phipps and Max Ritz. Healy gets a pass. Ritz to Ritz. Maxwell to Xander. Xander's got a sharp angle shot. Schneider shuts the door. Doc Schneider save. Rebound. And that one got the pipe. Xander Ritz. Looks like he's smarting a bit. May have suffered a leg or foot injury. We'll check on that as he came out of that scrum. Big Jack Reed cleans up the trash in front, but Schneider holding strong inside. How impressive has Doc Schneider been? We've asked everyone connected with UMass Lacrosse, why Doc? It's a family nickname it started. There are no physicians in the family we know of. He's not a big Bugs Bunny fan. Nothing like that. Dr. J, we're here in Philly, 76ers, you know, Julius Serving. Nope. Well, Dr. J did go to UMass, though, so let's check that one out. Whatever the reason, the doc has been tremendous in the UMass run. What? Sixth in the nation in save percentage. Greg Canella said he recruited him out of a, the Peak 200 camp, which is up in New England. There's that graphic I was talking about, the poor shooting, hurting the Terps. They have dominated quality time of possession on offense, but they just have not been able to convert. 
it's nothing strategy-wise UMass is doing. It's more of a, just great defensive execution. Groot left the ball behind. Dan Groot lost the handle. And a bunch of unforced errors by Maryland. Let's take it right back. Nice ride in front. Man wide open there is Walters. Who got pounded by Schneider. It's rare to see a goalie come out of the crease and check someone. That's what the freshman Doc Schneider just did. He made sure Walters couldn't catch the pass on the doorstep. Schneider, as I was saying, recruited out of a camp. Canelo loved the way he led the defense, the way he took charge. It's uncommon for a freshman to come in and have so much respect of his elder defensive teammates. Please. Please. Schneider's worked Schneider hard with him. He's got a great presence mm -hmm. in that day. Jake Kuhn, assistant coach, goaltender coach from Massachusetts. Four-time All-American at Nazareth. The Rochester, New York area. That makes a huge difference. Teams that don't have one of their assistant coaches with some background in goaltending. That's like having a baseball team without a pitching coach. Yeah. Your, your goalie is worth three, four, maybe five goals a game. And you don't address it from your coaching staff standpoint. Well, you see the teams with good goalie coaches appear here every championship weekend. Greg Canelo tells us 45 minutes before each practice every day. Jay Coon is out with the goalies, including Doc Schneider, working hard on making stops. All that hard work has paid off. Still, as dominant as they've been in key stats, the one goal lead. Garber free about shot. That one missed the target. Garber, excellent north-south dodger, good speed. Likes to push left-handed down that alley. Last week, the game winner, as he fed on a similar play, he fed Jim Connolly inside. Garber's grandfather, Dick Garber, looks over to Greg Canelli using those flip cards because of the noise here. Said they practiced this week at Garber Field with the music on. You gotta get those cards out and laminate them. Much louder on the field than the players are used to. Garber Field, probably UMass Lacrosse at Amherst. They got good crowds, but nothing like this. By far the largest crowd the Minutemen Lacrosse program has ever played in front. Here's Morris, one and one in the first half. Sean Morris free for a second left hand shot. He was checked from behind. Bouncer over the crossbar in front. Conley over the shoulder shot. That one was denied as well. As his stick was broken up, misfires. And now the clear try here for the Turks. Jimmy Burrell glides across the midfield line with a short stick. You get the feeling, really, Quint, that neither team can bust out offense. It's going to be this tight, uh, tight defensive game all the way through. Healy gets the pick from Phipps and dances back out of the box. Once Healy. you're in the box, you go out, you have 10 seconds to get back in. Healy's got the good matchup here. And they're trying to get a switch. Moody is trying to switch and does with David Von Voigt. Brendan Healy triggers play. Goal line extended near side. Ball out of shot. Phipps. McGlone. Crank shoots. And Schneider. Another save. Doc Schneider. His seventh stop of the day. That's Krieger with a long stick. The clear has been very effective for UMass all day long. When you get it into the cross of this guy, Jack Reed, things usually go well for UMass. The senior leader, the great defenseman we told you about. Better passing by the Terps. A couple sharp passes. McGlone with a 14-yard bouncer. Good we'll save one. by Schneider, and then one. UMass efficient on the clear. I love the way they change fields with it. Throw that long cross field pass and take the easy we'll out. One. Because on the ride, defensively, Maryland really flows to the ball, so you want to change fields, just like soccer. We have not had a goal, Quint, since the 13-36 mark of the second quarter. That was from Morris. Now it's Stabert behind the cage. Feeds top of the box, Pedrick through traffic, a shot, and it's wide. On the near side to the left of Alford. Backed up by UMass. Harry Alford, a signature green mesh. Here's Morris. Spin move. He's free. Sean Morris scores! First goal of the second half for either team. Second of the day for Morris. Give him three points. We told you what a big star he is for UMass. He's coming through. That's why a couple weeks ago, Dave, when he asked me who I thought the best player in the country was, I said, Sean Morris. Watch the way he is able to stop and go here. You'll see him go back and forth. 
right on this line. Wittenberg's with him. Next thing you know, frees it. he creates about a four-yard separation, which frees up that left-handed jump shot. Here it is again. He stops right there. The kid squats over 500 pounds, does it again, and Wittenberg keeps running. That is ballistic quickness. That's the stop and go, change of direction. Next thing you know, he's taking the unguarded 10-yard shot. Came into this game third in total points in the NCAA behind Chris Unterstein, a finalist for the Twarton Trophy from Hofstra. Hey. Push call. Yeah, Jake Dean. Gets it back. Jake Dean making it happen. Faceoffs have not been a fact. We haven't had many. It's a low-scoring game. Faceoff numbers, top of your You're screen there. Man. Morris fifth in the nation, points per game Let's coming up. in. Jake Dean's a guy Let's. facing off wise who's gonna gain right. strength as this game goes on. 77% per in his last three games at the X. And that's gonna be tough for Maryland to come from behind. Anytime you score, you gotta go through Jake Dean again. Ray Black, Ray. Black, Black, Ray's one. He has been a defensive blanket for UMass. Pete Conley just missed that top left corner. Boy, it does not look at all as if Harry Alford's pleased with his defense. Some pretty good shots, high percentage shots. Still got there late, and that ball came out of Conley's stick funny. I think his intent was to shoot it low, but it got blocked halfway, and the ball comes out weird. That can handcuff you as a goalie. Staber triggers play. Palms all over him. Sadowski comes over, double team. Bouncing ball, nice break for UMass to hang on to it. Now bodies everywhere. Holmes a nice hit. And that'll go back to the Terps. Another look at Sean Morris's goal. Again, the change of direction. Look at the space. No double team. And twice he has scored down low against Harry Alford. He's the toughest guy in the country to cover. Later on today, you're going to see Matt Ward from Virginia, a great shooter. Kyle Dixon from Virginia at the midfield, a great outside shooter and dodger and passer. But Sean Morris, strictly one-on-one. -on -one. He is so tough to keep up with. The way he can plant and head off in the other direction. Sean Morris tells, he, tells us he went to the national semifinals as an eighth grader. The games were held at Princeton that year. He has not been back to the championship weekend until now. He and the UMass players agreed every year when they didn't make it. They lost last year in the quarterfinals to Johns Hopkins, the eventual champ. The only time we're going back is as players. That's been the case. Trouble with it. At midfield. Back down to Rob. Talk about Sean Morris. And look at this UMass team. Talk about never giving up. Sean Morris is an absolute personification of that. He had to sit out a year for the transfer as a red shirt. Lost 2003 to a hamstring injury. And then had mononucleosis in 2004. Missed most of that year. Finally got healthy last year. And while well, we see the results, one of the top players in the country. You know, Rob, a great high school football player, more than 3,000 yards. Two-time All-State running back in Massachusetts. Brilliant lacrosse player in Marshfield as well. And he credits Jack Reed with going against the guy every day in practice for two years. A guy who brings it to the field, Jack Reed and Morris. They have titanic battles in practice. A game is a day off for both guys. They're, Monday through Friday, they're facing the toughest competition they'll see all year. And it's really elevated both of those players. 21 shots quick in this game so far for Maryland and just the two goals. It's unbelievable. Ryan Clark, unsettled situation. First ever goal of the season for him. That was her last tally. That came in the first half. Walters trying to change that, but as he pulls the trigger, goes right-handed. Again, the shot broken up. That's been a key all day. Nice shot by Xander. Ritz, far side to track it down for the Turks. Max. He tries to go to that top corner, missed the target though. Maxwell Ritz. And it stays a 4-2 game. That was there. Take oh, one more step to greatness. But again, Maryland off the mark. Take a look at their shooting percentage. 12 wins, 29%. Four losses this season, only 15%. Today, perhaps their worst shooting percentage of the season. Got to credit the defense, so there's a reason for that. Maxwell Ritz, goal line extended. Feed to Xander, his older brother. This is Xander's last chance at a championship. He's a senior. They're both from the Philly area. Xander Ritz winds and shoots, missed the target on Doc Schneider. Outside, we're out. 
Second leading scorer on this but team is Xander Ritz. He got the Hands scoring going for the Turks with 9.07 left. First quarter for a 1-0 lead. Now Max charging to the crease. Again, Schneider, a piece of it. What an effort. He dies to be closest to the ball as it crosses the end line. That is unbelievable for Doc Schneider. And now they'll try their clear. Look at the drought for the Turks. Schneider got off to a good start, and right now that Maryland's shooting for the corners, they're very fine. And as an ex-goalie, if you get off to a good start, you get the other team thinking. Garber charging through, left-handed shot. Might have gotten some pipe there, off for look behind him. And it stays 4-2, Brett Garber. Unsettled situation at great speed. The play all triggered by his nice play right at midfield. Yeah, Garber did not wait for the Maryland defense to set up. Pushes strong to the net off the far post. You see Alford turn and look, because you hear it hit the post as a keeper, and you wonder where the rebound's going to kick. The Maryland comeback would have to start with their defense. Their settled offense are getting nothing from it. They need some transition, and that starts with a turnover. Fred Federico. Trying to squeeze off a shot, bouncing ball for Wittenberg on his knees. Nudges the ball into the safety of the crease for Alford. Big Steve Wittenberg. High pass there for Alford. There he's got a tattoo. A Chinese symbol on his arm, symbol of strength. He says he got that when he played the national team in Australia. He was 15 years old. He'll have to be strong here in the second half because his offense is not helping him much. And UMass is nearly playing a perfect game. Very few, they've had one penalty, very few unforced errors. They've been clean in the clearing game. Minus one or two bad clears, and it, it's just a... They're asking Maryland to play the right game, and clearly Maryland's a C right now. Brendan Healy misses yet another cage for the Turks. He's got the speed, he created the shot there. Was off target. UMass has been everywhere the Terps have been so far. Walters a pass in front, looks for Ritz. Broke it up though. Quick stick goal try. Penalty flag coming. Paul Manessis brings it to the offensive end. Morris, Jacovina, crisscross. Slow whistle penalty. It's coming against Maryland. It will be a man up. When the Terps get possession, but in this situation, why rush if you're Massachusetts? You can milk some clock here knowing you're going to get the man up. This is where Brian Giacobina can be so dangerous, both offensively, you see in the clearing game. Recchion. Check. Morris. Spin move, trying to get free. Sean Morris. Best shot. Never got there. Broke it up in front. Rebound score! Giacobina! Buries it for UMass. 5-2. Goal is good. 33. Goal is good. Play 33. One minute. Brian Jacobina on the rebound. Play 33. One minute flash. We're facing off man down, guys. Watch Sean Morris draw the defense. He's got two, three, four, almost five defenders on him. Look how many UMass jerseys are around the cage. Harry Alford. He's powerless. Jacobina scoops this up, and he's got all day. Look at Morris draw the crowd. He's got three defenders on him. The rebound in front, and that is a direct result of the rule changes this year. Dave, last year, none of that happens. The ball hits the ground, there's a whistle. This year, it's a play on. And UMass capitalizes. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Good, you're good. UMass, Dean wins the face off a shot, off for the save. Harry Alford, rebound there. Dean scores with the long stick. Jake Dean, the Terminator. Maryland's got to get a timeout. Dean pops the face off. Harry Alford, a spectacular kick save. And then the follow-up. Here's the great save. And Dean gets inside position. He's got the stick skills, the ability to scoop that ball off, the sweet hands. He's got the reach also, the long arms. Tucks it around Alford. Three goals in a row in this quarter, and there's the timeout that you knew was coming for Maryland. The Terps are in some trouble. Jake Dean, a tremendous face-off man who is a hotel and management major at UMass. He wants to open up a lacrosse-only themed restaurant. He might want to do it right at Amherst because he's a big hero up there right now. 
Syracuse, Virginia coming up. It's available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Warrior Lacrosse. Second semifinal, 2 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN2. Orange Cavaliers meet for the second time. The first time, folks, it was a shootout. Kip Turner, UVA goalie, was pulled at halftime. 2015 in Charlottesville, won by Virginia. We may have that run and gun play here again today. Virginia's a team that gets off to great starts this year. 69 first quarter goals. Talent. Four straight goals. Scored by UMass now to take a 6-2 lead. And Jake Dean, dominant last week in the Exxon faceoffs, makes it happen on the way here, did he quit? Yeah, from the draw, he actually lost that draw. Rebound. He lost the draw, but the ball kicked off Maryland's faceoff man right back to Jake Dean. And you see how capable he is. Just a do-it-all type player who's gained so much momentum late in the season. 78%, really instrumental in their win over Cornell in the first round of the playoffs. And obviously last week against Hofstra, just so dominant in that comeback. They call him the Terminator for good reason. Great nickname because no one has a chance against him in the faceoff X. The only Maryland native on this UMass roster. Extra sweet, he's from Annapolis. Best face-off percentage of any player left in the tournament for good reason. Unbelievable. Third in the nation in ground balls. Third in the nation in face-off percentage. The leader, Alex Smith of Delaware. But, boy, Jake the Rake, 63.6% coming in. And as we see, he's not just a face-off man, is he? Jeff Schneider from Denver, also one of those top face-off specialists. But with Jake Dean, you, you got a lot to deal with. He's not the greatest on the draw portion of it, but on the ground ball portion, with that long stick, his long arms, his range, that is where he kills you. Right there, he, lo he loses that draw, yet makes the check and scoops it up. Great example. Stick is broken out there. Manessis had his stick break there. The handle got snapped. Dean has been tough. 14 straight shots. Wow. Most of them off cage. That's been a big issue. Time is now for the Terps here. They have been dormant offensively all day. Can Healy change it? Brendan Healy shot once again broken up. Reed, Dean are right there as he releases the shot, and it sails over the crossbar. Locked shots. Deflected sticks. And a big key. Can McGlone be a fire starter? He cannot because Maxwell Ritz can't handle a pass turnover. Another mistake for the Turks. What do you do when your seniors are the guys making the unforced errors? How do you jumpstart your offense that has been scoreless for almost two full quarters now? 13 turnovers, Quint, already. Terps are struggling. If you're UMass, you want to keep this ball as much as possible now with Sean Mars. Working the clock here, you hold for one shot. Take a four-goal lead into the fourth quarter. You kidding me? Comfortable. The pace of the game, Maryland, by its own nature, will have real trouble coming back. They don't like to run a gun much. Not a lot of unsettled transition. And when you're not winning face-offs, tough to tie back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back goals together. Officials tell UMass, last minute here in the quarter, they've got to keep it in the box. Goes out of the lines. It's turned over. Recchione, right-hand cradle. Intercept. Final moments. Brandon Healy, full out of steam. Sprints in, Ritz, big shot, and again, it's off the mark. On a pass from Brandon Healy. Target missed by Xander Ritz. I wonder why Healy just didn't shoot. Well defended by UMass. Healy felt that giving the ball up to Ritz was the better option. Next thing you know, Ritz is taking a shot almost right from up, behind right the point that Brendan passed it to him. Staber, final seconds, third quarter. Feeds it front, Conley. Can't get a clean handle, and the ball bounces behind the cage. That'll be it for the third quarter. 31 minutes, 29 seconds of drought for Maryland. No goals. They have not tallied since Ryan Clark 
with a minute 29 left in the first quarter. Since then, it has been all Massachusetts. Four straight goals. Sean Morris, their star, has two of them. 6-2, three quarters complete from Philly. You already know that college is expensive, and more bills will be arriving soon. You need money for next semester's tuition, books, living expenses, a computer, and other costs. A Chase education loan can help. You can get up to $40,000 a year for most college expenses mailed to your home in about a week. It's easy. Students can apply by phone or online in as little as 15 minutes. And unlike other consumer loans, repayment can begin after graduation. If financial aid and federal student loans aren't enough, call 888-663-0215 or visit chaseed10.com. That's 888-663-0215 or chaseed10.com. Dad, yeah. I'm getting a dorm room too, right? Right, right. You're, you're going to live in a dorm room and Mommy and I are going to live in a nice cardboard box. Act now. For a limited time, you'll receive a $50 Best Buy gift card with your loan. On a good day, I would barely make a splash. Now, I hope for as much impact as possible. There are over 360,000 NCAA student-athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. MLB.TV now on ESPN.com. Sign up today. The road to the College World Series begins on ESPNU. They have won the College World Series. Catch exclusive live coverage of every regional game on the way to Omaha. It all starts Friday at noon and continues through Sunday only on ESPNU. Raking, blowing, and hauling away grass and leaves is exhausting work that can rob you of your weekends. Reduce these chores to a matter of hours with the DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum. Using a high-powered vacuum that attaches to your lawn tractor's mower deck, the DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum collects leaves, grass clippings, nuts, and twigs from your lawn while you ride. All material is finely shredded to one-tenth its original volume with DR's patented shark teeth blades. Chip branches up to two inches thick. Clean out planting beds with this optional vacuum attachment. Then return this rich compost back into the soil. The result is a property you can be proud to own. Call now, 1-800-722-3100, to discover how you can try a DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum on your own property risk-free. Seasonal savings are now in effect, so call today, 1-800-722-3100, or visit drleafvac.com. DR is professional power for homeowners. NCAA Championships on ESPN2. The Division I Men's Lacrosse Championship. Presented by Warrior. The means to dominate. And in part by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. In Philadelphia, hard to imagine. Massachusetts has never been to the national semifinals. Now they're 15 minutes away for their head coach, Greg Canella from making the finals. They're one victory shy of time the all-time victory record. And a big reason Quinn has been a shutdown of Joe Walters. 153 career goals today, none. They've been all over him. His looks at the goal have been low percentage shots where he's gotten checked or hit as he's let it go. Walters, Healy, and McGlone, a combined zero for 15. Zero goals on 15 shots. And you see Walters, he scored points in 63 of 65 lifetime games. Wow. This is a shocker in my mind. Greg Canella told us during the week, we spoke with him, we hope to score in the 12 to 13 range. We think that'll be enough against a very good Maryland offensive team. They've limited the Terps to two goals here, beginning our fourth quarter. First possession, last period, and it belongs to the Terps and the home whites as the two seed, UMass unseated. Maryland shooting two goals on 25 shots. It's 8%. Virginia Cavaliers, who you'll see later in the afternoon, they shoot in the low 30s in terms of percentage, 32%. Second game to Eastern ESPN2. Phipps turns, spins, and missed the target again. Off cage. Jacobina, the jack of all trades, we've called him. Try to rake in that ground ball. Maxwell Ritz gets it back from him. Can someone step up for the Terps? Time is running out. 
Phipps intercepted briefly by Von Voigt. Here's Walters. Pass off for Healy. Phipps shoots. Again, the shot broken up. And backed up nicely by Maxwell Rich. How many times have Maryland shooters found themselves on this carpet here at the link after taking a shot? All day. Phipps free. Fake shoot scores. That's what the Terps needed so desperately. The junior attackman has his seventh of the year after two last week against Princeton. Mike Phipps unassisted. Little lefty shot. You'll see the ball starts with Max Ritz. Kicks it. Over-aggressive defense by Jack Reed, and you see the frustration on his part. Good little tuck your stick, deal with that, and then no support came. The over-the-head check by Jack Reed actually caught the UMass defense off guard. There was no one to support. Let's see if Maryland can tie goals together. So tough to play with the lead in NCAA tournament play, Dave. UMass is in a tough spot here. You don't want to shut it down. What a battle off the faceoff. Conley wide open. Tremendous save by Alford. Dives across the crease and robs Jim Conley blind of a sure UMass goal. Unbelievable effort. Unsettled. Let's try and strike again. Now keep in mind, folks, if you're new to lacrosse, it's a lot like basketball. Because you can get the ball right back after scoring on a faceoff, you can have runs and the Terps can get right back in this game. What a stop by Harry Alford. Marked that one down. It was unsettling. Conley, the sniper, had five last week in the win over Hofstra, including the game winner in overtime. It was denied. Doc Snyder calling out Hammer. That's against an invert. Shots in just wide. Travis Holmes. Second line mid. Harry Alford with the spectacular save off the faceoff. Tamburino wins it, but guess who is ragging him? That's Jake Dean. Ball kicks to Conley, the left-hander. One cradle and a pass, and a shot, excuse me, and an Alford with a diving stop at a critical moment in this ballgame. Harry Alford fourth in the NCAA goals against coming in over 62%, charging in, shooting scoring, Maxwell Ritz. Here come the Terps. They're not going anywhere, 6-4. All of a sudden, UMass on defense, not supporting, not double team, not double teaming the ball carriers. From the end zone camera, watch the space that's created. Just a speed dodge to the inside, and the double gets there, but it's just taken at a poor angle. Right here, you thought a hit would be made, and Rich just carries through traffic, snaps one, top shelf. Extra special for Maxwell Rich trying to make sure that his brother. Xander does not play his last game here today in this field. And end the season as they did a year ago in the national setting. 6-4 game. Let's go back down to Rob. Well, during that break after the end of the third quarter, Coach Cottle said to his guys, this is Carolina all over again. What happened against North Carolina back in March, Maryland was trailing late. They scored five unanswered to beat them 9-6. to six. They've got two unanswered so far in counting, Dave. Looking good here, Rob. time the Ritz brothers have scored together in the same game Xander and Max happens here today now Phipps scored a moment ago to make it 6-3 controls again you really have a new feeling for this game as I say that on cue Walters mishandles the pass 14th turnover of the day so far for the Turks Staver unsettled here they come on the move Conley scores on oh, a pass from Clay Staver Jim Conley the freshman buries it UMass back on the board. Maryland defender Joe Sanoski takes a bad angle at the ball. Jake Dean with the clear. And watch the Maryland defender right here, number 18, right there. He takes a bad angle. Next thing you know, UMass has got the numbers game. Stabert Connolly beats Alford to the near side. Watch when you're goaltender and you come off the pipe, just the hair uh, that opens up for the shooter. That whole play created by Joe Sanoski, Maryland's defender, taking a bad angle. Next thing you know, Stabert's underneath him. Jim Conley, two-time All-American in high school. He had 324 goals in high school. 523 career points in North Andover. 
Massachusetts. And as Greg Canella told us this week about Conley in high school, he had the ball in his stick all the time. He was constantly relied upon to carry his team. And although he has scored now six in the last couple games here, Conley is a pretty good feeder as well. He's become a more versatile player at this level. He's a quiet kid. He's a humble kid. He carried his high school team. He's had to learn to be more of a complimentary player. His brother, Ryan, graduated in 05. He's a three-year starter. His father, dad, captain the 69 team. That unbeaten Possession. UMass squad. Only unbeaten team UMass history is dad's team. Coach Canelo tells us quest to succeed. That is the story with Conley Walters handles a tough pass climbing the ladder to bring that one down. That was his spot. You thought Joe would drop that ball on his hip and let it rip. But the pass being off the mark cost him about a half second of setup time. That's all you need. Sam Moody, UMass sliding so well, the defense adjusting. Ritz lost his stick with the ball in it, somehow recovers. Nice job. Xander Ritz. Maryland struggling, struggling with their deep pockets today. A lot of these players use real deep pockets with, with a hook, and you see the passing has been off. Dan Groot. Switches to the right hand. Groot, return pass. Sharp angle shot, scores! Dan Groot, the freshman from Canandaigua, New York, near Rochester. That's close to Walter's hometown. Makes it 7-5. Dan Groot, the freshman. UMass is starting to run out of gas defensively. You just roll this forward a little. You see on this invert freezer right there, this defender's got the backup responsibility, so he cheats in. You need to help here if you're UMass, and it's late. Look at all the standing around by the UMass in the red jerseys. They're tired. They're out of gas right now. Somehow they have to find their second win. Maryland's depth, they subbed a lot of guys early that may be paying off right now. Yeah, I remember the third line midfielders, a lot of time on the field. Dan Groot. And Coach Kyle tells us has had an up-and-down year, typical freshman season. Well, right now, it's way up after the big tally. Face-off numbers, top of your screen. Brand new game here. It was 6-2 after 3. It looked like Maryland was completely finished. This is a running game. It's warm out today. UMass, even this week, training up at Amherst, it was in the 50s during practice this week. These student-athletes from UMass had finals. They've been through a lot emotionally. You gotta wonder how much gas is left in the tank. Game has completely turned. Quake just had the field. Maryland in control at the moment. Who's two? Federico. Who's two? Marmon, spin move. Gotta get the balls to 25. Morris has been quiet of late. White, white. Does have two goals today. Not the time for Sean Morris to, to delegate responsibility. I think he needs to handle it as much as possible. Hey, well, who's two? Get ready to go. Marmon, top left corner of the box. What up? Gonna muscle his way in. Nice play by Ryan Lang. Helps break it up. Terps on a clear try. Jimmy Burrell. Marches into the box. Half field set now. Terps can cut it to one. Morell, a real unsung hero, excellent speed. Lake Braddock in Virginia. Junior with 34 ground balls coming in. Burrell had five in the win last week over Princeton. You and I saw it at Towson. That's a big number for a defensive midfielder. Sure is. Means he's everywhere. Relentless. Brendan Healy gets the high pick. Moody's trying to slide to him. Goal line extended far side. Maryland has the edge on ground ball. Speaking of the category 30, 24. Healy left handed shot off the crossbar. The goalie's best friend if you're Doc Schneider. And that means Massachusetts gets a back chance to clear it out. Alley dodge by Healy, who's shooting so well with the reverse angle, gives you a perfect view of what the goaltender is seeing. Love the way Healy shoots. He gets his hands up high around his ear level. He's able to get good velocity. Healy's only about. 5'10", 170 pounds, but he can shoot the ball on the run with both hands. He's putting a lot of time on his own. He loves to shoot over a goal into a goal, which really emphasizes taking that straight overhand shot. 104 captains a senior. 
from Great Falls, Virginia. Dave Connell tells us Brandon Healy is the hardest worker he's ever seen. I told you earlier in the broadcast about his strength index numbers. He's the cross team champ in the weight room. What are we, what are we in? For his height and weight. Great students too. Headed to law school. He represents everything that's good about college athletics. I'll tell you that. Took an ACC scholarship with him to law school. Not bad. Goes to Ohio State. Maryland 2C. Yamen with it. Stalling the warning. Little yeah. little, little, little. Tell them to stay in the box. Talk to if it's out, that means a turnover. Trying to keep play going are the officials here in the field. Is seven goals going to be enough? Maryland's going to have to chase somewhere in this fourth quarter. They're going to have to step out and force these matchups. John Morris scores! Charges in and beats Alfred for his third of the day. A hat trick for Morris. UMass back up by three. Hard to believe that Mar Maryland could let Sean Morris beat him. I'm calling for Morris to handle the ball in this fourth quarter. He looks fresh. He looks fast. He's owned the matchup. They switch it this time. Wittenberg's no longer on him. Ray McGill is there. It doesn't matter for Sean Morris, the best player in the country, and he's proven it right now. So fast and strong. Gets underneath his defender, and then the double team is too late. Three goal cushion. All three of the Morris tallies have been unassisted. Procedure call will go against Maryland off the faceoff in the X. That means. UMass gets it right back. So Rob told us about the arduous path to this championship weekend for Morris. Started his career at Rutgers. One of the first days happened to be September 11, 2001. And he said they saw the smoke from the towers, fighter jets flying overhead. Some of the scariest moments he's ever been through in his life. That close to New York. It was a difficult start for his career at Rutgers, so only great. stayed there for a semester. So Greg Canella welcomed him back to Amherst. He was recruited heavily by UMass with open arms. And all he's done, well, to Wharton final five. Three goals today, and UMass on the verge of a title game. He's been under the radar, but no longer. And that's really part of his success is the fact that his work ethic has never changed. He's never spoiled by success. Bodies everywhere. Great job by Federico to keep it in front. They go. Stabert Rob. Alford had Clay Stabert in his face on the doorstep and shut him down. Clay got physical on the far side a moment earlier. UMass trying to take advantage. That would have been big. Back to a four-goal spread. It's Dan McGlone. Maryland charging through Bill McGlone. Trying to pull the trigger. Shoots. Schneider, a piece of it behind him. And he finds it before it crosses the goal line. At the five-minute mark, that is a... Absolutely stellar save by Schneider. If UMass can clear now, they can start eating into this clock. You think of the difference between 8-6 and 8-5, and that, that is a big-time kick save by the freshman. In his first ever NCAA tournament run, ninth save of the day for the Doc. Doc Schneider of UMass. You like Greg Cannell, a Long Island product? Great! Greg Cannell says he's never seen such leadership from a young player as has been the case all year long with Doc Schneider. Dave, you mentioned it earlier, his assistant coach, Jake Kuhn, the former terrific goalie at Nazareth, really has brought Doc along, and, and I can't put enough emphasis on, especially as a freshman, having you know, a capable coach working with you for hours a day, and what a difference that makes. Thank you own for Pedrick. Corey had second goal. Maryland's got to come out. Minutes. Maryland's got to come out now and start playing some tight man-to-man -man defense. Can't afford to sit. UMass is just playing against the clock right now. Greg Canella still has two timeouts in his back pocket, and he is stalking the official on the far side. We'll see if the double teams come soon. Gaiman thought about pulling the trigger, but he'll keep it to the top of the box. Hedrick with it. Cutting, Recchio shoots off for the big save. 
on Andrew Recchio and makes a beautiful stop for Coach Greg Canella trying to bring his team to the final. Smart move by Canella, just staying right behind Matt Palum. If 50,000 people here, you don't want to take a chance that the ref can't hear your timeout call. And as Maryland stretches now, you see these UMass middies cut in the middle. Things are opening up inside. Here's Morris, got three already. Sean Morris, left hand shot, side of the net. Alford had the angle shut down beautifully. Probably not, the shot you wanted. Out. Probably not the shot you wanted if you're Sean Morris. Needed a better angle. Needed more time off the clock. It's awfully big. Yeah, you're right. It's just a three goal spread here. There is time for Maryland. Jeff Reynolds. Maxwell Ritz. Cut it to a 6 4 lead. Terps can't waste too much time, though. Healy fresh off the bench, left hand shot. Schneider, a big save. What a stop by the Doc. Danvers on the far side trying to bring it out. Now the long stick. Difficult play here. A lot of ride pressure coming. Schneider is checked, but he hangs on the ball beautifully. Calm. Little face dodge by Schneider. Anytime an attackman's rushing you like that, just step out of the way. Maintain your composure. Look to the far Brady, side. That was a big save. His tenth hey, I need to get out. Yeah, I need to of the semifinal. Wait, what to go? Who wants to go? Jack Avina for Larman. Keeping a three-goal game. Conley hit by Wittenberg. Timeout call by UMass. With 2.10 to go in regulation. You think of what Greg Cannell has been able to do this year. Hard to put your finger on how good is this UMass squad. Let's check in with a Pontiac game-changing performance. Brought to us by Pontiac. Sean Morris has been something else today. The assist. To Rory Pedrick, the unassisted goal in the second quarter. The fourth goal of the game in that third quarter to give UMass a 4-2 lead. And then maybe the nail in the coffin, the goal that made it 8-5 at a time where UMass's offense was getting a little stagnant. Look at the comparison. When you talk about seniors showing up on big, big days, the Coke Zero game track, it's right there for you to see. Walters, Healy, and McGlone, no goals on 19 shots. Meanwhile, Sean Morris, he's been involved with half of UMass's goal, three goals, one assist. They have eight goals, and that is basically par for him this year. This is nothing new for Sean Morris. He's done this all season long. It's NCAA championships in Coca-Cola. Nothing like it. How about these Minutemen? As Morris gets a cool down by the UMass trainers. They are only two minutes, ten seconds from their first ever appearance in the final. Unseeded team. Now, keep in mind, Quint, they were not favored to beat Jeff Tambroni's Cornell Big Red in the first round. In Ithaca. At Sholkoff Field in Ithaca, won that game by a goal. Upset in overtime, a team with a 17-game win streak in Hofstra, and here they are on the verge of upending the second seed Maryland. They were down in both those games. Last week, they were down 10 to 5 with about eight minutes to go. Game over, season over, and somehow they pulled it off, and they've used that momentum. They've come in, knew they could score goals, knew what a great player Sean Mars was, but they held Maryland scoreless for a period in this game, 32 minutes and 33 seconds, basically half the game. Good defense and some timely goaltending. Road to Philly. Well, Cornell. They were down with 346 left. Federico, big goal there. Recchion won it. And then Hofstra, the Jim Conley tally on an unbelievable. In overtime, they score six straight to beat Hofstra. And the Pride, a heavy favorite to make the semifinals. When you look at this UMass team, solid up the middle. You got the goaltender, you got Jake, Jack Reed potentially the best defender in the nation. And that man right there running your offense. And then in between, Jake Dean at the faceoff. So you've got superior elite players at some key spots. And to me, what's been impressive today, the complimentary guys, the guys like Jacobina, Stabert, and Connolly, very solid, very few errors. Sean Morris so concerned that his UMass teammates would lose focus since they made the semis for the first time ever. Has been the case. Jacobina, ground ball. Can he find it? Two minutes left here in regulation. Smart play by Brian Jacobina. Realized that grounder was him. And, and so he crouches over it. And the only way you're going to get it is if you run him over from behind. That's exactly what happened. Turnover. Smart play. We're under two. 
Under two minutes, officials here. Mike Frasani can hear them the telling the players they've got to keep it in the box. Harry Alford is out of the crease now. He's trying to help cause a turnover. And Wittenberg does just that. Big hit on Stavert on the end line. McGlone triggers play here. Just over 90 ticks left. In the fourth quarter, Maryland needs three to tie. It's going to take a miracle. Especially with Jake Dean on faceoffs for UMass has been so good. McGlone, will this be his last game? Hell scoreless so far. Schneider to the save on Bill McGlone. And he can just see the last gasp go by with Maryland a little quickly. Danvers can't handle it. Pass and a turnover gives the Terps the ball right back. Three goals in 115, certainly possible. Earlier this year, Greg Canella and UMass, a miracle comeback against Fairfield. A game they trailed by two with 103 to go, and they actually won the game in regulation. So. Healy, watched by Von Voigt. Xander Ritz, Walters. Did he get pipe or was it a save? Boy, a laser beam shot that got something there. Hit the pipe, man, saw the rattle the goal. Absolutely nothing for Joe Walters. The All-American to Wharton Final Five candidate is about to lose another semifinal game. It'll be his final appearance as a Terp. This must be devastating for him. Healy is shot again off cage. It's been a story all day for the Turks. Watch out! Who's out there? Xander Ritz. Try bangle. Stopped by Schneider. Ball airborne, Maxwell Ritz trying to rake it free. Here's Phipps, has one in the second half. Looks like it's not gonna be enough. Walters, can he get free for a shot? Penalty flag coming, Flag another save down. for Schneider. Delay penalty, Ritz a sharp angle, stops, Flag rebound, down. broken up. Meanwhile, the clock just ticks away as Moody finally picks up the ground Four ball, will have a penalty slash. on a slash call on Von Boyd. 44. But with only 23 seconds left, it's not gonna matter. How about the young goalie? Coming in, freshman, how would he react? And sometimes Flash. that works in your favor. You don't know what to expect. So yeah, it's hard to get scared when, when you're not really sure what's gonna go on in this arena. And he has just been just full of poise and confidence. He's made some easy stops and then a couple kick saves. Look at him, he knows it. The doctor is in. 13 saves for Jonathan David better known as Doc Schneider. I know he and his family will be going online pretty soon to look at the box score and do that for the official result from every NCAA national championship, including a complete recap of the 06 lacrosse championships. Go to ncasports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Well, when they go online, they're gonna see a stat. Maryland shooting five goals on 42 shots. Schneider now has over 200 saves on the season, 201 saves on the year. About 2 o'clock Eastern time, we'll have Syracuse-Virginia, tremendous second semifinal matchup. It looks like UMass will play the winner, and the Minutemen will go for their first ever title. The first ever championship, potentially, for any school from New England, as Dave Revson said in the championship studio with Lee Felsmo at halftime. So this is history-making for UMass getting just this far. And for those for the Terps expected to win this game as the two seed with a 12 and four overall record. Many had thought Maryland would knock off UMass and then have to try to beat Virginia and UVA had beaten them twice. You've got to think when that with the confidence UMass has, it doesn't matter who they play in the final. If it's Virginia's favored to beat Syracuse, so what? <laughs> the way that UMass is approaching things right now. Biggest concern is on one day's rest, they've really got to take care of their legs. Walters, a shot could be the last as a Terrapin. Again, it's snuffed out by Schneider. It's been the story all day. Ten seconds left, Jacobina. No reason to rush. Get ready, Amherst, for the first time in school history. The Minutemen are going to the national championship game. Can you believe it? The dream is still alive for UMass. 8-5, the final. They knock off second seed in Maryland.
Disappointing for the Terps senior class. They've been here three times in four years, and they come up empty-handed again. As UMass behind their star player, Sean Morris, the defender, Jack Reed, face-off, Jake Dean, and their freshman goaltender, Doc Snyder. Those four guys are the heroes. They played like a team who's been here ten times. The unseated underdog all the way to the championship game on ESPN, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Available on ESPN HD, UMass.